Uh, Asai, uh, we all know Goldman's been pretty aggressive in helping to address inequality in business. Uh, the initiative's not new, but can you talk about what it does and the kind of progress you've seen? Absolutely. Our 10,000 Small Business Program, we launched almost a day ago. Really, our commitment to helping small businesses across the country. Over the last decade, we've reached 10,000 small businesses. And as you know, our CEO in December announced another $250 million to get to another 10,000 small businesses. You know, our hope is that these small businesses not only uh, survive, but thrive and ultimately become uh, large businesses. But they're certainly facing any number of challenges, whether it's related to capital, related to their network, um, or, or related to really uh, keeping their businesses strong and going. Are you having, uh, before we get to Fifi, I'm curious if you're having, if you're being overwhelmed with candidates or if it's, if it's a bit of a dig and what's more important, the access to hard dollars or some of the softer uh, externalities like Rolodexes and people that you might meet? The demand for the program is significant and only growing. In terms of what's needed, it's both, right? You know, the social capital that it takes to really grow a business. Our business owners tell us, you know, what they need most is that network to be able to grow and expand their business. But they also need the capital. You and I know that it takes money to make money, to be able to uh, launch that new product, to hire that social media influencer who's going to get your name out there. And so they need that capital in order to grow their business. Curious, uh, you know, what is the, the st status of your business right now amid the pandemic and everything else that's going on? Uh, and was there anything that you learned or that you were able to take away from that Goldman Sachs initiative that helped you better weather some of these harder times? You know, our small businesses uh, right now have been extraordinarily resilient. Business owners like Fifi have, you know, become creative in terms of pivoting their businesses to meet the time. Uh, we're seeing trends in terms of them being more tech enabled, uh, more digital, doing more export. One of our business owners was doing large catering corporate events. Well, that's certainly dried up. And now he's doing micro weddings. And so we're really seeing businesses shift uh, and also planning for a post pandemic world in terms terms of diversifying their business stream and, and their platform across the board. In terms of, you know, surprises that we found in terms of looking at our data, one actually relates to black business owners. In particular, we looked at the longitudinal data and we found that black female business owners were the most educated subgroup in the entire population, a whopping 86 percent of them having at least a bachelor's degree. Uh, but as they entered our program, they also had the lowest median revenue, roughly earning 47 cents on the dollar compared to their white male peers. And so while we're facing the same storms, we're not all in the same boat. Fifi, I'd love to get your take on that. Well, you know, we struggled in the beginning. We had a lot of we, we quickly realized that we needed to pivot. Um, but we quickly, you know, implemented a growth plan that I created with the Goldman Sachs 10,000 small businesses. And now we're shipping our food nationwide, which was just what we needed. Um, some of the other challenges we've had was, um, you know, with the ever changing regulations and the cost that it entails to keep our restaurants and bars afloat. You know, for example, with the, the outdoor seating structures, I mean, they're expensive. Right now, I have three tables. I'm allowed three tables in my store, and that's certainly not sustainable for us. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.